the biggest risk we have every single night is safety. And it became so critically important to have the right people and the right personalities that we had to build a system to measure those personalities. And that's in the recruiting vetting process? Oh, yeah. How do you measure those things? Humility. We created essentially a scorecard. It has six questions per category. So six for humility, six for work ethic, six for emotional intelligence. Questions like, do the energy they bring every night, is it consistent as in it positive? So we talk about body language and emotional intelligence and all these different things within these questions. And I'm happy to like provide this thing. Mm -hmm. And we use it in three ways. We give it to the person on the second interview when we're hiring somebody. So we say, here's the HHS system. This is the only thing you're accountable to in your first month. And two things happen. They read it and they go, or actually they just don't call back. (laughs) (laughs) And I've made a ton of hiring mistakes in the past where you get past this honeymoon phase and people turn into grouches and there's people, personalities involved. I remember a guy that we were going to hire that was a like brilliant electrical engineer. He wanted to quit his job, come work with us because he heard about the seven and seven schedule and thought it'd be the best thing ever. And then he read it and he didn't call me back. And I, I really wanted to hire him. And, and I called him back and I said, any reason you didn't call me back? He's like, I have terrible body language. And I'm not willing to quit my job and take the chance within the first month that I get fired for bad body language Mm -hmm. because we score them. If you're an A, we celebrate and figure out a way for you, reward you. If you're a B, we like find immediate improvements that you need to make within some of these categories. And if you're a C, we let you go on the spot. No questions asked. And And you set that expectation up front. Oh, so we set that in the interview. They have to like agree to this system coming in. They're evaluated by their entire team, including them doing a self-eval, which is a part of the overall score. They get to like grade themselves. And the team, do they, are they sent on like a test evening prior to hiring? Or I guess they just know that once they start going out. Yeah. So we call them tryouts, but when somebody comes to try out with us, which means we give them a month, Mm -hmm. we we hire them on, but we call them a tryout. And at the end of that tryout, which is typically a one month period, they get graded by their entire team. And they know it's this like really tense moment where- How many people are on a given team? Eight to 10. Got it. Yeah. So it's a good average. So if somebody- Yeah. If somebody's got a bug up their ass about somebody- Doesn't matter. it's just one person- It it always ends up being like a great average and it always ends up being a great measure of that person. Hmm. It's been this extraordinary filter for hiring. Hmm. Asshole is the wrong word. But when we figured out how to use that system, we now grade every person at their first month. We grade every single person quarterly, including me. (laughs) Every single person gets graded. Mm -hmm. And there's questions on there like, do they try or ask to do more than is required of them every day? Mm. And it's been so amazing to see the mistakes I make in when we're hiring new people or moving people around. Like a great example is I moved a couple people from a field position into a management position. And then all of a sudden their work ethic score started coming down Mm -hmm. and it wasn't because they weren't working any harder. It was, I didn't do a good job defining to the team what their new responsibilities were. So they saw them sitting on a computer and doing these things and they're like, well, they're not in the field helping us. Mm. And so it's just this amazing quarterly exercise that just pulls out all of the tension within your teams Mm. and creates framework for people to address those tensions. And then ultimately what's amazing is to watch people grow. How do you give feedback? Let's say they come back and they've got a bunch of bees. What's the big boss do? Yeah. So we sit them down and we say, is that the Royal way or is it just you? (laughs) No, no, it's, it's multiple people. Yeah. It's me and like the two or three other harvest managers. Got it. Great example. One of the questions we asked talks about, do they, are they genuinely happy to see their teammates succeeding? Because safety is such an important part of what we do. When we bring somebody in that's more talented, just like a sports team moves the best people into the best positions, we immediately move people around positions based on their skill sets. So somebody has to be genuinely happy to train somebody that may replace them in a role that they may enjoy yeah, more. Yeah, they used to be the yeah. like right striker or whatever. Exactly. And they just got replaced. And it's amazing to watch somebody that really wants to be there because they find purpose and they really love the schedule and they know the impact that they're having to our community have to make the decision 
to be better for their teammate every night, to be like celebrating that person's growth, even though it's potentially coming at the cost of something that they enjoy. Yeah. So there's these. That's hard. Oh, I mean, I'm not saying it's unreasonable, but that, I mean, that's, that's asking a lot of, a lot of people. And I don't know if I would be, if no, I'm being honest well, with myself, I think that'd be hard. Here's the thing. Like it's been such a amazing exercise with lots of iterations, right? Yeah. Like the first three iterations, I made so many grown men cry and I felt so bad. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was, was that your delivery or the measurement where you just it like, was just the hey, me- listen, fuck this. It was the measurement was <laughs> it's wrong. sink or swim. No, <laughs> you're getting evaluated by your peers yeah, yeah. on your personality and yeah. the value it's bringing to your team. Yeah. And you have to sit down quarterly and like be told your humility is not good enough for this team. I assume that the responses are all anonymized. Yeah, everything's yeah. anonymized so, and then average. For what it's worth. So I've done what's called a 360 interview. All yeah. right? And I know people who as executives or founders have had these done. And without exception, myself included, every time that I spoke to somebody who's experienced this for the first time, they're like, I went and they sat in my car. Oh. And I basically had like a nervous breakdown, crisis of meaning. What do I do? <laughs> like these are names everybody would recognize, yeah. but they were just like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, the first time we did it with a large enough team that I included myself in it because we were just so small early on. It was like I think like the third iteration. I was like, "I need to be a part of this," mm-hmm. and I got all of the feedback back. I was just like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> <laughs> but if we really want to build extraordinary teams, like yeah. I realized my approach to some of our conversations yeah. had to be so much better and nuanced to make, to make them better. And like, it wasn't the right approach. And you learn all of this. You end up reading this thing like Braille after doing it. I've done it like hundreds of times now. Yeah. And I mean, with repetition, I imagine yeah. it's like exercise, right? It's like, okay, you're going to apply metrics once a year. You're, you're going to be very, very, very sore. Yeah. And you might even hurt yourself. But if you're doing it. But it was amazing to see what happened. Is changes. We built this system because we knew we had to go from like eight people to 45 in a really short period of time to hit our mission goals about a year and a half ago. And I had made poor hiring decisions in the past. And they were mostly personality based. Or they were, that person was operating amazing when I was around. But the minute I left. They turn into a different person. And then there's this he said, she said game yeah. that like this completely erases all of that. Yeah. Because it's anonymous team scoring and the manager doesn't have a unweighted vote on whether that person stays around. And what ended up happening is we, that HHS program started attracting people. Mm. They started hearing about this accountability process yeah, to so you're ensure. Attracting, you're attracting better fits. Oh right? yeah. So coming back to, so you're not saying, Hey, fuck face. Yeah. In like the fourth, fifth, 10th, 20th iteration. Yeah. What's the language that you use? If somebody has growth opportunities, let's go. It's really specific to which of the 18 categories they're struggling in. Right. But like, how does the meeting start? Okay. So we sit down and we we're going to give them paper and we say like, okay, you're a B minus. Yeah. Tim, we put a 250 pound L on your back. You crumpled into an Oregon <laughs> yeah. crane and you couldn't get up. So you're a B minus. And then we celebrate first some of the categories that they're doing really well in. Like some of the categories that point to professionalism or energy or all these different things. We celebrate right away because they're each one of the 24 segments have different scores within them that have been averaged throughout their team. And then we address the ones that they're like a C in. and a great example, a lot of our young guys that come on board. Got it. So they're not cut if they have a C in a particular a C review average. point. It's the average. Yeah, yeah got it. Okay. So the C average, and it's been amazing to see that system work. I've let go several people that were Cs that I would have never let go. I wouldn't have known to let them go. Yeah. Like wouldn't have known that that was the impact they were having on the team at large. Mm-hmm. It just would have never come out. Yeah. I would love to, you mentioned, I think you offered to maybe share oh, absolutely. the question. So we'll put that in the show notes as well. Yeah. Tim.blog slash podcast, because I'm, I'm incredibly curious to check it out myself. It just, at least at face value, it seems like a very elegant solution to a lot of problems that can seem like 
fragmented, separate problems you have to address in different ways. I've heard lots of people, and again, like I'm just a system builder and by no means is it perfect, but I've heard lots of people speak to how important these different personality traits are and how they reward them. And more importantly than the C are the A's. Mm -hmm. Being able to like say to somebody, this incredible combination of like humility, work ethic, and emotional intelligence is making your whole team better. Yeah. And your whole team is telling you you're extraordinary at the things. Being able to reward and compensate somebody for that and have a measure to do so. When you say compensate. So let's say they have, this, I know this is getting in the weeds a yep. bit, but I, I feel like yep. that's where a lot of the good stuff is hiding. So what, how many questions were there again? There's... 18 questions, six on humility, six on work ethic, and six on emotional intelligence. And they get this like A, B, or C for each of those questions. They're, it's graded one through seven. Yeah. We just did it because it was seven days of the week. And yep. we talk about like being at excellent every day. So it's one through seven. And then we add up all the scores, which is 126 total, and they get a percentage. So if they're an 87, we give them a B plus. Which is the average for the Which total. is the average. How do you reward or compensate the A's? If they're in their first six month of employment and they get two like A's or A pluses in a reward, we give them a raise based on that contribution. And then we celebrate with the team like, no, it was, a, was an A this last quarter. And like we make sure the team knows the contribution that they're having. And it's already, what's so interesting, they already all know. Yeah, right. But to not have framework to reward them for being amazing people has always been this fuzzy place for me where I couldn't like reward or compensate that person for being an extraordinary individual that was making their whole team better because it didn't fit into what the classic hard skills define as like they're a great shooter or they're a great driver or one of these different things. And every single one of those A plus people are our most highly skilled people as well. Mm. When you operate with a certain level of humility, you are more willing to learn. Yeah, right. And you learn faster. Yeah, totally. And every single person that's come through our program that was like a B minus or a C that was like highly skilled and made the choice not to get better at these, what I very much consider like skills, just weeded themselves out. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's been really cool to see people grow. And like you're in this camp and you see these guys with their, their, a lot of them will tape their score up above their bed and they'll like look at it in the morning and say like, okay, my job is to make, I was a B minus in this thing. I need to bring more consistent energy every night. Like we've got guys yeah. that go up and down and up and down and they're like, okay, I'm going to be trying to be more consistent. Like they know what they're working on. 